Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carissa and I am a home daycare provider in Alberta, Canada. If you're not already, click that subscribe button. Tons of videos on my channel about home daycare, hauls, meal plans, tips and tricks, day in the lives, whatever you can think of. I, I probably got it in the works, so make sure you're subscribed. All right, let's get into our video today. I thought it would be a good idea to do kind of like an interview, tips for interviewing, I guess. Things that I've come across, questions that I ask when I'm interviewing, things I want to know to see if this family is right for me. So I thought I'd put together a list. I've been working on it this week of different questions and different things that I would suggest you watch for and you ask when you are having your in-home daycare tour and just getting to know the family. So let's get right into it. Okay guys, so I don't know how it works for most of you, but for me, I would honestly say like 95% of the time, I actually get my, my clients off of Facebook. So basically our area has um, like, we call a home daycare a day home here in Alberta. So my area has a day home page and you can post your ads, people can post wanted ads and every single month it like it gets renewed I guess like you have to renew your ad if you still have spaces so one of the things I always watch that page um, I like to see what which parents are asking constantly and then when I have space available I kind of have an idea of like oh that person has posted a lot before maybe stay away so my first tip for you, um, as soon as you come across a family, as soon as somebody is in contact with you, my first tip would be to look them up on Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, any social media. That would be my number one tip. You need to look them up on social media. I love to look up my clients in our local moms group, see what kind of people they are. You get a, you can get a really good feel for people on what they're posting in that moms group. So that is definitely a big one for me. I always check them out just to make sure they're sound of mind, I guess is a nice way of putting it. And I just like to make sure that these are somebody who is not high drama, who I'm going to be able to work with, and they love their kids. Like, that's really what I'm looking for. I check their profiles. I want to see their kids on there, happy, healthy little human beings, and I want to see that, right? For me, when I am first contacting them, it's very important that I go over a few specific things. That being my rate, because if I'm too expensive, I don't wanna waste my time having them come to my house and waste an hour of my life if they're not gonna think my rate is acceptable. So right out front, I like to tell people my rate. I. I really don't hide it from my clients. I just let them know this is my rate. It's non-negotiable. If it's not going to work for you, bye-bye, basically, right? So it kind of saves me time because I really don't want to go through all the effort of the extra cleaning and like getting organized and getting things together for a family who's going to walk in and be like, oh, whoa, no, sorry, that's like way out of our price range. So I know I'm high in my area, so I state that to people. I say, you know what, my rate is pretty high in this area, and here's why. If they're going to leave right then and there, it's not, it's nobody's fault. Like, you can afford what you can afford, right? So also, I am private, so I can't offer subsidies to families. So right then and there, it's kind of like, get my rate out of the way so that we can move on. 
Another thing I always ask is if there's any medical conditions because if there's a medical condition that I just don't feel comfortable with, then I'm just going to say, you know what? I don't feel comfortable with that. Sorry, I don't wish to pursue this kind of thing. I had one child years ago. Like this was when I first started my day home and it was probably now nine years ago. I've only been running my current day home for almost four years, but I had another day home nine years ago. So, so yeah, nine years ago, I had a lady come. I didn't ask any of these questions. I wasn't really like prepared. I was really young and I just wanted to like make some extra income kind of thing. Like, honestly, I would have called it more like babysitting. So anyways, this mom came and then she proceeded to explain to me that her son had this like condition where if he got too hot, he would start having seizures. Um, at this point, I didn't even have my first aid. So I was like, you know what? I don't think this is going to work out. I'm just going to say no. I'm not comfortable with it. And you know what? It's okay to put limitations on yourself. You cannot handle everything. Nobody can. Okay. So if you think you can handle that, that's awesome. That is on you. I know what I can handle. So I just say, you know what? I, I think that's too much for me. And saying that I am one of the ones that will take these severe ADHD kids because I can handle that. That to me is easy. My son is severe ADHD and ODD and that is simple. But when it comes to medical things like having to constantly monitor somebody's temperature, make sure like if they get too hot, you have to like strip them down naked and make sure they get cooled off and stuff or else they're going to have a seizure and end up in the hospital. To me, that's just not something I want to deal with. So that's why I just said, no, I'm not good with that. And it was a waste of an hour of my life. So that is one of the reasons why I put that in there as well. Another thing I also like to mention to all my clients is that I have dogs. So when they come in, they're not shocked and surprised. They can see my dogs. They can get to meet them. But like some, some families, they don't want providers that have dogs. Our dogs are part of our family and part of our day home family. All of my day home families love our dogs, but that's just the people that I choose, right? So it really is on you. So those are some of the things that I definitely tell parents before I let them like even consider coming in for an interview. So let's just start by defining a red flag. So a red flag in the childcare industry is either a behavior or an action that the parents show you during any type of contact with them. I have a few examples for you. Um, like red flags that I watch for are something like showing up late to the interview, being in multiple daycares. If the kids come to the interview and then they make a huge mess and then neither mom or dad says, oh, could you please go clean that up? That's a huge red flag for me. Another red flag would be parents saying strange things to you. Uh, I have a little bit of a story to go with this one. Just for an example, I just did an interview not too long ago. The entire thing was red flags. Like I, as soon as she came in, I was like, oh, oh, this isn't happening. Like this lady, I won't get too into it, but she came without the child, which number one is a huge red flag to me. I want to meet the child. That's why we are interviewing. I'm not here to meet you. I'm here to meet your child who I'm going to be spending nine hours a day with. So that is huge for me. I need to see the child. Second, she was just like already like asking about lowering my prices, how how many days I'm sick in a year. And then just like skip over all that. We come to the end of the interview and I walk her upstairs and she stands there and she looks me up and down like, guys, I cannot even... I can't lie like this this was this cringy she looks me up up and down like this and she's like so how, how healthy would you say that you are and I'm like oh like 
I didn't get it at first. I was like, oh, no, no, no. Like, I haven't had any COVID cases come through my day home yet. And she's like, oh, no, no, no. Like, how healthy would you, would you say you are? Like, you eat fairly well. Do you exercise quite often? And I'm like, um, yeah. Like, what are you asking me? She's like, oh, I just want to know, like, in case, like, you need to take days off. I want to know how many days you would be sick in a year. What? What? Like, who asks that? That was, honestly, that was just icing on the cake after everything else that we had already gone through. So another red flag for me, uh, like I said at the beginning, we post on this day home group. And when I see people constantly posting, huge red flag for me. There's some people on that group that like every other week they're posting looking for a new day home. Okay, I'm not taking you because clearly there's a problem. Asking for a different rate, that's always, I always say my rates are non-negotiable. I even have it in my contract why they're non-negotiable. So if somebody asks me for another rate, no. Uh, bye-bye. Another one, this one has a bit of a story too. If the kids aren't listening to their parents, they're definitely not going to listen to you. And I know kids can be a little weird around parents. Like I always have issues at pick up and drop off with the other kids coming to the door and like showing off their cool skill. But no, if a kid is not listening to their parents, like as in really bad, I don't want that kid because that kid is not gonna listen to me. I did an interview one time, mom left the kid in the car and I was like, uh, no, no, that's not how I do interviews. I don't know why people don't wanna interview with their kids, but then her kid came in and he was running around my house. Like he was terrorizing my upstairs. And I'm like, this is not even my daycare space. Like, buddy, you need to come down here. This is where my daycare is. And yeah, so he wasn't listening to mom. Mom kept trying to tell him to come down here. Dad was trying to get him to come down here. It wasn't happening. I said, no, I'm sorry, I can't take him. And I, I finished off the interview. So another thing that parents like to do is like, I guess warn you that they're gonna do something that goes against your contract. I've had this quite a few times where parents are like, oh yeah, so we're gonna need full-time hours. But every like March we go on a cruise. So um, that month we'll just take our kid out um, and we'll just pay uh, for the following month. And I'm like, whoa, no. Okay, that's not how this works. You can't pick and choose when you come. You're paying for the spot. You're not paying for me to watch your kid. You're paying for my spot. So that's another thing that I always like make sure if they're going to go against my contract in any way, right as we're doing the interview, I won't take them. So those are just some red flags if you don't know what red flag is. So one of the first questions that I would ask when a family comes in, typically they'll tell you this beforehand and you'll already have a schedule in mind, but nine times out of 10, they always come back with like either more hours that they need or sometimes it's different hours. Sometimes they have different needs that go along with their hours that they don't voice when you ask them what hours they need when you're first making contact. I always say, what hours do you need? And then I make it clear that anything over nine hours is an extra fee for me. They are allowed nine hours of care per day or else it's more money. So I need to make that clear in my interview so there's no surprises when they sign up and then they're like, well, you didn't tell me that. Then the next thing I would always ask is, what days of the week they need. Personally, I only take part-time kids right now. I just, I get more money out of it, so I always just take part-time kids. So I always say, what, what hours do you need? What days do you need? And are your days going to change in the foreseeable future? Like, are you going to be adding in more days after the summer? Are you going to be needing a second spot for your second child? 
after the summer, like that, those kind of things, just so that I know what, like ahead of time, what kind of hours they're needing, because I need to make sure I'm within my ratio. Here in Alberta, we're only allowed to take six kids a day. So I need to work within those six spots that I have daily to make sure that whatever needs they're going to have, I'm not trying to refill the spot in a couple months because I just can't fill their needs. So that's another very important thing to ask. Is there, is there days going to change in the foreseeable future? Uh, the next thing I always ask is, has your child ever been in a daycare before? You definitely want to ask this because it's going to give you some kind of idea on the comfort level of the child. You can always say, have they been in a daycare, a home daycare, any type of preschool program, or even just like babysat by grandma. Those kids who have already been in a program are going to be so much easier because they're more comfortable. They understand that mom is going to go away and then she's going to come back and get me at the end of the day. So if you're kind of like weighing out which kids you want to keep and which kids you're going to say no to, this is a really good question to ask because you never know. And when you're doing that, you could also get a red flag because maybe they've been to like seven different daycares. And you don't want to have somebody who's been to seven different daycares. That's a ton of moving around. That would make me question, oh, is this, is this like a thing? Like, is she like a helicopter mom or is she just like too hard to handle type parents, you know? So that's something I would definitely consider too. Next question. Sorry guys, if you keep seeing me looking down at my lap, that's because I have my laptop in front of me. I've literally been working on this all week. My next question would be to ask if the child is potty trained. Obviously a baby's not going to be potty trained, but I mean, if they're like two years old and you're doing your interview, it's definitely a question you want to ask. I also do tend to ask if there's any plan in the foreseeable future on potty training and what they would expect out of me when it comes to potty training. So if they're just expecting me to fully potty train their child and them not do it at home and then, and then the child just come home and magically be potty trained, that's, that's not happening in most cases. <laughs> I have done that before, but it's like different situations, you know? So another thing is like, I, when, when I ask that question, I definitely want them to know that this needs to be a talked about thing. If the child is not already potty trained, then I want to know ahead of time when they're planning to start, how they want me to help. I don't want the child to just show up one day in underwear and them be magically potty trained and then us have accidents all day. There's a huge difference between home and daycare. Parents don't understand this. At daycare, we our little minds are constantly being worked. There's so much interaction and activities and just constant movement that the child doesn't even stop to think, oh, I need to go to the bathroom. So I definitely like to make that clear with parents. Like if they're not already potty trained, then it is something that we would work together on and not just dump it on me. So that's also in my contract so parents know. Next question, I want to know what parents do for work. This kind of just gives me an idea of them and their needs and also just to maybe a little bit about them, uh, get to know the parents a little more. But like take for example, if mom is a teacher and she's going to have her kids out for the summer. I want to know that, right? Like I'm going to have to fill those spaces for two months, which typically isn't hard for me in my area, but I still want to know that it also gives me an idea on if the parents will be late, like if the mom or dad is a police officer and they have like some kind of case or something, then I want to know, like, are they going to be late to pick up their kid because of their job? It's a very important question for me. And now my next question to go along with that is, do they have backup care? I am a home daycare provider. So that doesn't mean that I am 100% of the time going to be available. If my kid needs to go to the doctor, I might have to take a day off. And I don't want to be stressed out knowing that you don't have backup care 
when I have to go and do my daily stuff. Every now and then we do need a day off to do things. It's much easier now with COVID because we just talked to the doctor on the phone, but just saying like you kind of want to know right you want you want to know if they have backup care if you're sick especially during covid guys what if they are like close contact i'm not taking a close contact into my day home another fun question i love to ask the parents is what kind of activities do they do as a family so i kind of just like add this in as small talk but really i'm like I'm processing up here while I'm small talking with them. So I like to know, do they go camping? Do they even hang out with their kids? Do they do special activities with their kids? Are their kids involved in activities? Kind of gives me a sense of their parenting style, their likes and dislikes. I'm trying to find how I mesh with them, right? Next question, I like to ask about naps. I like to know if their kids are still napping, how they go down for a nap, what kind of comfort objects they may need, if they've napped other places than just at home in their bedroom. I ask as many questions about nap as I can honestly come up with off the top of my head because I wanna know if the child's gonna nap for me, if I'm going to have to rock the child to sleep, that could be a huge downturn, right? If I have two babies already on one day and I'm now taking a third baby and that one needs to be napped, that's just not gonna, that's not gonna roll for me. I, I can't do that. I don't have six arms. I need to work within my limits so that I can do my best as a childcare provider and so that the kids in my care are properly taken care of. So again, setting limitations on yourself, super important. If you, if you'd say to the parent, oh yeah, I can do this. And then you can't do it. You're going to feel terrible when you have to terminate care. This has come up for me before in the past where I just cannot get kids to sleep. And then it becomes a problem. I'm not a miracle worker. If a child has not been sleep trained to sleep other places, then it's bed. We're going to have a problem. So asking about nap is huge for me. Like I think it's very, very important that you know what this child needs to go to sleep during the day so that they can wake up and feel awesome. So that is important. One of the biggest questions I do like to ask is what are their expectations of me as a childcare provider? What do they think that a childcare provider should be providing to their child during the day? Nine times out of 10, they will not know how to answer this question. They will come up with random things off the top of their head, but I think that is important that they think about it and they are prepared, honestly, to answer this question. I wanna make sure that I can meet these parents' expectations of me. If they're looking for something that I am not, then I'm going to straight out say, no, that's, that's not how I run my, my home daycare. We don't eat organic every single day. Like those are just kind of things that I need to know. The child's diet. When we're on that topic, I always ask about their diet and that is exactly why I want to know that they're not expecting basically chicken and quinoa with broccoli every day for their kid. I want to lay it out clear, the meals that I make. I always take pictures of my meals and I put them up online. So it's not a surprise to parents when they come in and I'm like, oh, you can just go check out all of the meals that we eat on my Facebook page. So that's a huge tip for you guys. Definitely make sure the parents are clear on what kind of meals you feed. If it's not healthy enough in their eyes, then you probably don't wanna take them because you're not gonna change the way you cook, right? Just for one kid. Another thing is you should really ask, like if there's any diet restrictions, if they're a certain religion and they have restrictions or restraints on their diet, you need to know that. And if you can't work with those diet restrictions, then you shouldn't take the kid, right? So there is a lot of things to ask these parents. I 
really honestly believe that when you are interviewing a parent, it is you interviewing them as much as it is them interviewing you. And that is because this is your business and you want to make sure that you are going to get in families that you mesh with. You want people who have a similar parenting style to you. You want to know like, do you discipline the same way? Do you feed them the same way? Are your thoughts and um, ideals in the same spot? Or are you guys totally opposite ends of the spectrum? That's important to know. So I definitely feel like when I am interviewing, this is my choice. It's not their choice. If they don't want me, I'm fine with that but it's, do I want them? So if they don't want me, I'll move on to the next family. But if I know they want me, I definitely want to look it over and see like, is this really the family for me or should I try this other family? So it's something to watch. My last question I think is kind of an important one. I think you should ask how many daycares they're interviewing, how many they've already interviewed, and how many they have left to interview. If they've interviewed like 10 different daycares, I feel like these parents probably have unrealistic expectations of what a daycare is, and they should probably just go with a nanny at that point. But that is why I asked that, how many more they have to go. I wanna know when they're gonna have their decision so that I know how much time I have before I need to make my decision on if I want them even in my childcare. So it's an important one. So also during the interview, like I said, I always interview with the children here. The point of the interview is that you are meeting the kids as much as the parents. You're gonna have to be with the kids every single day. So you wanna make sure that these are kids that you can handle. I like to watch the kids play. I like to interact with them and I like to see how they interact with their parents. I've done interviews in the past where I had a sensory box out, uh, black beans, and this little boy, he took the entire bin and dumped it and then started taking his cars and running them through the beans. And then I just watched mom sit there as he played with them. And I was like, okay, all right. This gives me a good idea of how this child will behave. Um, especially because he was asked not to do that beforehand. And then mom never said anything after he did it. So I was kind of like, oh, okay. So that's a, that's an important thing to watch. You should always be just watching and processing and just slow down when you're doing these interviews and just watch what's happening. I think that is so important during an interview. Don't just get caught up with, with like getting nervous and scared and like trying to like just figure out the answers to their questions. I like to just be calm and just observe. <laughs> like, so there's that. Um, another thing is don't be a pushover. If I know you want to fill your spots. I totally get that. Like, guys, that kid that dumped out the bin, I took that kid because that was one of my first kids and I just didn't think. I just wanted to fill my spots. So <clears throat> I had so much trouble with that kid. Ah, it was, oh my gosh. Guys, that was a story. That was a story. And you know what? When I, I can never post that story online, but anytime I talk to providers, I tell them about this family and this whole thing that went down. And oh my goodness, it that taught me so much. Taking that kid was wild absolutely wild. Um, I'll just say CPS did get involved and 
it was insane. I have never had to deal with a situation like that and never again will I ever deal with a situation like that. My rules and my the things I do in my day home and my interview process now are so much different because of the situations that have happened for me. And I really believe this is something that you need to do and work on. And as you progress through the years of watching children, you are going to grow exponentially. There are going to be quirks out of children that you cannot take and it is okay. That is 100% okay. You are allowed to have a limit and sometimes we need to remember that and not just take in any kid because we need the money. For me, that was my mental health. That, taking that kid, that destroyed my mental health while he was in my home. And I will never do that again. I just won't. So now, if a kid is not meshing well with me or my group, or I see that they're being disrespectful during the interview, or I see those little quirks that I don't like, I just back away. <laughs> I just, I'm very friendly about it. I will finish my interview and then afterwards I will email them and I'll be like, hey, you know what? I just don't think this is going to work out. Like I'm always pleasant about it, but it's so important that you realize those quirks and those behaviors during your interview. I honestly think watching is more important than talking in this situation. So definitely keep your eyes open during your interview. So next, I just kind of want to give you guys this advice. I think this, these three things really just make you more successful. Honestly, that's your interview is going to be more successful. Your whole setting up your day home and getting kids in and just the whole structure of your Childcare is going to be more successful if you do these three things. Number one, take a deposit. You want to take a two week deposit. Just do it. Don't be scared to ask for it. If they want you, they will pay the deposit. This is so important. Otherwise, you are just going to have people walk away from you and there's no professionalism there whatsoever. If you're not taking a deposit, you're basically a babysitter because they can just up and leave at any point. So staying professional, take a deposit, take a two week deposit. Number two, four week trial period. People can be fake during interviews, they can seriously be fake. You can have the nicest family ever come to an interview, their children behaving and so amazing. And then as soon as you start watching them, mom starts nitpicking at things and you're just like, oh my goodness, this is not what I signed up for. So I always have a four week trial period and at any time during those four weeks, I can back out of our contract and the parents can back out of our contract. So I give it for both sides. If they don't think their child's meshing here, then they are free to leave. So really I say I don't have a child fully enrolled until they've been with me over a month. Number three, you want to set your rules very carefully, put them in your contract, and during your interview, go step by step through your contract, your rules, your policies. If the parents have questions, that's when they ask them. But you're going through that list together and that's what you need. So then you can say, oh, hey, you know what? We went over this during our interview. Um, remember when I went through my contract with you and they're trying to say, oh, well, I'm only five minutes late. No, no. We went over my rules during the interview. Here it is. So my friends, that's what I have for you today. These are just some of my tips and tricks for interviewing. I hope you found this helpful. 
for me, I really wish that I would have had these experiences and this growth before I had started, but it just wasn't possible. So I'm offering it up to you. These are the things that I've learned and you can take it or leave it, but I know these are what work for me. I've been successful using these techniques, these questions. And now guys, I got to say like my mental health is so much better because of these things that I put in place. I love running my daycare. It, it is my absolute passion. This is the job I would pick above all others. I love that I can stay home with my kids. I love hanging out with kids. It's always been a passion of mine. And I love that I can make more right now being a home daycare provider than I could at any other job without a college degree. I'm making as much right now as a home daycare provider as somebody with a college degree. So for me, this is my dream job. I never want to quit doing this job. It is amazing. It is amazing. The kids that I have come through, it's so rewarding for me to just see the growth in the kids. And I just, you know, it's so important to pick kids that you mesh well with. And that's really what this job is about. If you've made it all the way to the end, you are awesome. Thank you so much. Um, please subscribe. I've loved making home daycare videos. This is seriously going to become my side business. Like I am loving YouTube. I love making videos. I love sharing with you guys. Ah, it's been so fun. And my editing skills are getting so much better. Love it. So if you can, share this <laughs> to your home daycare groups. Share it to your friends who have home daycares. Gosh, guys, I just, I'm super excited for the future. I can't wait to see where this channel goes. And yeah, so thanks for watching, friends. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.